so Adeline and Briar, in all the excitement of the baptism, I forgot. Uh, we have a, uh, a certificate for you here and also a, a Bible that we're going to give you. Alan will bring it out to you. Um, it's the message translation, um, which makes for an interesting read. Um, just a, a, a little different, and you can use it in conjunction with some of the other translations. Um, but uh, let's hear it again here for the, uh, the baptismal crowd, shall we? <laughs> So the verses that uh, that Mark read to you certainly paints an interesting picture, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, when 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 you look at that story, and you know, when you go home, I encourage you to to read uh, everything that happened before and, and everything that happened after. But I mean, it is it is a train wreck. You know that that family is an just an absolute mess. I, that's that's why the sermon title is, you know, next on the Jerry Springer show because these guys would be on that show. That's that's what their lives would you know, had spiraled into. You know, if we can just take that out of the, the 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 Bible story mentality that we have so often when we look at Scripture and 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 pull that out and and, and be there with them in that moment and. and and what they were dealing with, what they were experiencing. You have a, a, a wife who is willing to deceive her husband, to, to take advantage of the fact that he's blind. That's pretty bad. But she was perfectly willing to do it. And, and she... She talked to her son about conspiring with her in this. And, and his concern wasn't, you know, gee, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. His concern was, was not so much with, with, with uh, you know, that doesn't seem right to treat dad that way or anything like that. His concern was, well, what's that mean to me? You know, if I go along with this little scheme of yours, how's that going to work for me? Hey, am I going to... Am I going to receive the, the blessing? Or, or if he finds out, then am I going to be cursed? And I'm not sure I want to play along with this, not because of right or wrong, but just because of his own concerns, his own desires. Of course, Esau, well, Esau was one of those guys that really only saw the moment. You know, it was it was all that that he cared about when he came back from from hunting that day and sold his birthright to, for a, a bowl of soup. It's like I, I don't care about anything else. I'm just hungry at the moment. All I care about was right now. And and he knew the blessing was was good, and he knew it was something that 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 it, you know he would think about in the future, but he. It didn't really seem to pertain to him now, other than the fact that he wanted it. Then you've got Isaac, who has determined that his life is about over, except, you know, it wasn't. He had lost his sight. He had lost his will to live. He had thought that he had lost his usefulness. And so he said, you know, I'm going to pass along this blessing because now it's about time for me to, to die. Except, they, no, he still had a lot of years ahead of him. But, but he was so depressed and despondent about it all that, that, that he just kind of said, okay, well, I'm done. It doesn't sound much like a Bible story, does it? Keep in mind, we're, we're only, you know, two generations removed here from Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Isaac could still remember walking up that hill, carrying the wood to, to offer himself up as a sacrifice, if that's what God demanded. He still remembered 
that day. He, he remembered the faith of his father and the faith of his own. But that had kind of cooled over the years. And he still wanted to pass this blessing along, but, but he no longer really expected God to show up and do anything about any of this. It's interesting that when they found out, when, 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 you know, when Isaac and Esau found out that they had been uh, tricked by Jacob, who, who, by the way, sorry, if you have children named Jacob, sorry, the, the name in the language back then meant cheater. Talk about an appropriate name. And when they found out that they had been cheated, you'll, you'll notice that the, the scripture says that, that, that Isaac shook in anger and, and, and Esau cried out. You know, when we read that, but, but understand the Old Testament doesn't really talk much about emotion. Read through the other Old Testament accounts, of, well, the, the one we just talked about where, where Isaac and, and Abraham went up this mountain. You know, there was no great emotion recorded there. For the most part, the, the Old Testament dealt with the, the historical facts and, and didn't talk much about the emotion of the moment. But so great was their anger, their frustration, their, the, <laughs> that, that, that God recorded it in Scripture. I mean, this, this was a family blow-up to end all family blow-ups. You know, and, and, and they may have thought that they had a, a, a good reason to do this, right? God had said that Jacob was, was going to receive the blessing. But do we really think for a minute that God would have had that blessing passed on to the long kid? You don't think for that, that, that God would have spoken to Isaac and said, no, not, not, not Esau, Jacob. Do you remember Joseph when he was blessing his sons at the last minute? God spoke to him and he crossed his hands to, to part a different blessing to a different child because that's what God told him to do. God would have done the same thing here. There was no need for, for the deception. There was no need for any of it. But as, as a result of this, of course, you know, Esau's like, yeah, as soon as the old man's dead, I'm going to kill you. And I'll take what he gave you by force. And so now he's got to, to flee. He's got to run for his life. How's that plan working out for you so far? And, and he runs off to Laban, who, boy, I tell you what, if you want to talk about cheaters, two peas in a pod here, and these guys spent the next years cheating each other, trying to, to, to get the advantage of one another. And Isaac was denied the presence of his son, Jacob, for all of those years because of this scheme. Because of the lying and the deceit. When he finally left Laban, there's that great verse, you know, the, the Lord watched between you and me while we are apart one from another, and we, we certainly cleaned that one up, and we use it, we use it at wonderful things, we use it at a wedding sometimes, we, we, you know, we, oh, it's such a nice verse. No, what that verse, when it was actually spoken was, it was like, I don't trust you, you don't trust me, the Lord watched between us while we're apart. The Lord makes sure that you don't get an advantage on me, and I don't get an advantage on you. This was Jacob's life as a result of the scheme that him and his mom had cooked up. All of the pain that came along with that, that, that you know, and, and they did it all in the name of God. Go down the road a little further. What happens with Jacob's kids? He has all of those sons, and they all hate the youngest, Joseph. 
and he'd sell them into slavery. And go home and tell dear old dad he's dead. But for years, he thinks that he is. Think about that. Isaac had not been able to see Jacob for all of those years. And now Jacob does not get to see Joseph for all of those years. Another scheme, another plan, more lying, more deceit, more cruelty. It's a happy story for a baptism Sunday, isn't it? You know, to me, though, when I look at that, I, I, I see further proof of, of, of the divine nature of God because any respectable, self-man-made God wouldn't, wouldn't tell that story. It wasn't necessary for us to know that. He could have just said, and the blessing was passed on, and the blessing was passed on. There's a reason that God recorded this story. There's a reason that it's in there. Why? I mean, you and I, let's be honest, this is the kind of stuff we hide, right? Nobody needs to know what struggles our family deals with. Nobody needs to know about the struggles we may have with friends. Nobody needs to know about the struggles we may have with people in the church. Nobody needs to, we, we clean it all up, we make it look good. God stuck this in here. We look at this family and we see a Jerry Springer episode. We see a train wreck. God looks at this family and you know what he sees? Israel. The 12 tribes. From whom will come the line of the tribe of Judah. How can he look at this mess and see that ending. But he does. And he brings it to pass. And the reason I believe that God put that story in there is because whether we like to admit it or not, that's us. We don't always treat each other well, do we? We're not always honest with each other. A little bit of deception seems to be okay. Come up with that wonderful expression, a little white lie. Yeah. We were talking about that a few weeks ago in, in Sunday school about lying, and I, Logan was like, I don't know what we're talking about. Lying's wrong. That's kind of the end of the conversation. Yeah, but we've kind of cleaned that up a little bit. Which one of us doesn't have family members that we struggle with, like Jacob and Esau? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but this is pretty extreme, you know. Yeah. These two kids fighting over a blessing. You ever see a family fight over a will? It ain't pretty. See families where, where, where parents choose favorites? They, that's not pretty either. Clearly, you know, they had done that in this situation as well. And here we are, still doing it. And still feeling justified for doing it. Well, they were wrong, you know. Okay. So because they were wrong, then you choose to shut them out for the rest of your life? You choose to treat them differently for the rest of their life because they were wrong about this one thing? Interesting how we do that. Sometimes we'll even do it in the name of God, just like they did in this story. Well, you know, 
They just can't be around him. He's that kind of person. Really. You see, this family's not so different than ours, is it? The husband and wife, they can't be honest with each other. None of us knows anything about that, right? There we are. As they, as they fight over these things, as, as their family disintegrates over these things, look around, folks. And unfortunately, sometimes that gets passed down generation to generation, just like it did here. But God looked at them and saw Israel. He looks at you and sees the kingdom of God. See, it's easy for us to, to somehow think that because our lives are such a wreck that somehow we're, we're beyond the redemption of God. We are not. We never are. We may have messed things up royally. We may have messed our kids up royally. We may have made bad decisions in life. We may have done all kinds of horrible things. We may have, have, have lied to people. We may have cheated. We are not beyond the redemption of God. He looks at you and he sees the kingdom of God. He looks at you and he sees his child. He doesn't look at you and, and see the failures and the mistakes and the hurt and the pain other than he says, I want to take that away from you. He put this family in scripture so that we would know that our families have the same hope this family did. That doesn't mean it's all going to be sunshine and lollipops starting tomorrow. These guys had a long road to walk. You and I might too, but we don't walk that road alone. At no point does God wash his hands of us and say, well, that's just too far. That's just too much. He looks at us and says, I know the plans I have for you. I know, you know that, that I want to bless you. You know that I want to love you. You know these things. Come on, remember them. Even in the middle of this mess, remember that. The song we just listened to, she said, when the world is caving in on me, I, I fall to my knees and I breathe in your peace. See, Scripture talks about the peace that passes all human understanding. Having peace when things are going well does not pass human understanding. So it's moments of peace that come in the middle of the worst storms of life that makes no sense to anyone unless you know God. Unless you've felt his touch, unless you know that he loves you. And we forget it. And he puts this story in this scripture to remind us. And the amazing thing is he brings good out of it. Don't get me wrong, he didn't intend for anything. It wasn't his idea for anybody to lie. It wasn't his idea for anybody to try to steal the blessing. It wasn't his idea for his brothers to, to throw Joseph into slavery and then lie to their father. No, 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 no. He says, well, you've made a mess of it. I'm going to clean it up, though. I'm still going to bring my will to pass. I'm still going to bring blessings to you. I'm still going to, to bring good out of this mess. And sometimes we look around, we look around at our own families, we look around at our country, we look around at the, the jobs that we work, and they're just a mess, but I am here to tell you, on the authority of Almighty God, somehow, some way, I can't tell you how, there is hope. God is still at work, and He will still do great and wonderful things that we can't even see, we can't even imagine.
we look at what we are experiencing now and we think this is it. This is what life is always going to be. It is not. There is hope for a new day. Christ walks with us. And while we're at it, Church of Christ, let us not separate ourselves from other people in the name of God. Jesus came looking for them and we try to hide from them. Jesus came looking for you and we tried to hide from them. Christianity begins with the recognition that I can't do this. I wonder how many things we try to steal from God that He would freely give us. He was going to freely give us the blessing. How many things do we try to steal? How many times do we make our own plans? How many times do, do, do we think, well, I've got to help God along with this one? God says, trust me. Would you trust me? Look, there are times we even go so far as we, we, we take grace, this, this, this abundant gift of God that says, I forgive you, and we try to turn that into something we have to earn too. So I guess the question we have to ask ourselves today is, as we look at, at, at this family, as we look at our own family, as we look at our own lives, is, who do we believe? Do we believe ourselves and what we see and feel in this limited bit of knowledge that we have? Or do we believe that God will yet bring good out of this mess? Not that he's put us here so that he can bring good, but even though we're here, he's going to bring good out of this mess. Do we believe that? Do we believe what he says? Do we believe? I give you words of hope today. We can trust him. He is at work. And though we cannot see it, and may not even live to see it, He will bring a good that we can't even imagine. Do we believe what He says?
straight line, well maybe not a straight line, but you can draw a line from that family to the parting of the Red Sea. I don't know what you're dealing with, but we serve the one who parts the sea. And so I bless you now in his name. Go from this place in the certainty of his love, of his desire to bless you of his forgiveness, of his protection. When you despair, look to him. Let him be your hope. Let him be your strength. Let him be your life. The honor and glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 